Hi, this is Raja from Kanker Labs and um, today as you can see we'll uh, deal again with the DCA75 Pro. Now I've left out until now the capabilities of this uh, component tester when connecting it uh, to a PC. We will split this uh, review into two parts. Uh, this part will only deal with um, the component data that are displayed with the PC software and not the curve tracing cap capabilities. The reason is uh, I want to compare the, uh, this unit to two other uh, curve tracers so this will become a little bit like a curve tracer shootout although three models are not that much. Uh, but anyway, it's, it wouldn't be fair uh, just to look at the curve tracing capabilities of the uh, DCA75 without comparing it to uh, other models that are available, more or less available, still on the market. And uh, so today we'll concentrate on to uh, basically what you can see as basic data when, when unknown components are um, connected. First of all, you get with the, um, with the unit itself a little USB stick where the software is available so that you can uh, start using the unit um, even without a PC connection because you uh, you probably don't have the latest software on the USB stick because the uh, software as well as the internal firmware is upgraded um, uh, quite continuously. And so we'll t let's take a look at uh, the software here, what we have as uh, basic functions. Um, let's see, if you go to help and check for uh, updates, as soon as you connect the DCA75 Pro and uh, start the uh, program, which is simply called peakdcapro.exe, uh, it will automatically change for update as well for the Windows software and for the firmware. And uh, the la latest firmware I had on was already, um, uh, was, there was already a new version um, with uh, some improvements. And so that's quite nice that with, with uh, one click on to check now or automatically you can update uh, the uh, Windows software as well as the internal firmware. And uh, then we, what else do we have? All the, the other two things are only for the curve tracing graphs. And so uh, here you can also set the LCD contrast, uh, which I would expect also to be possible without the uh, Windows software so that I could adjust the uh, contrast also with a special key code by pressing both buttons or anything else. Um, because I like this unit as a standalone device, um, but all functionality should also be available uh, as a standalone device and not only um, from uh, controlled from the Windows uh, software. So now let's um, repeat some of the uh, component tests again when now we have the... Um, the uh, Windows software running. Let's start with a Schottky diet and we don't have to press the uh, test button here on the device. We can also use the test bu button from the software. Let's wait a few seconds and of course that was no problem and uh, now uh, the display, that is quite nice. Uh, you get the, uh, the colors that are the um, connections um, quite nicely displayed and you get the basic uh, data that are measured uh, and you don't have to scroll anymore. And you get a few explanations here on the right side, which is uh, good for uh, beginners. Now let's continue with a somewhat more 
well let's say complicated diode and that is uh, two anti-parallel uh, LEDs or you could also look upon it as a uh, bicolor uh, LED soldered together from two single LEDs and we get the correct symbol again and again I'm, the display is quite nice uh, now it's 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 much more uh, ergonomic or the the usability is much greater with the windows display but i can cannot repeat it too, too often um, they could also make better use of the graphical LCD just with an auto scroll mode so that without touching it anymore you get all the data uh, with a continuously updating or uh, changing page changing display. Now uh, let's continue with a Zener diode see how it looks with that. We know beforehand that all components that I test are correctly recognized because I use nearly the same as those in a part one and two uh, of the test. And yes, uh, nice display again. We get the f uh, reverse voltage as well as the forward voltage and some uh, explanations also about the limitations uh, like here. Uh, Zener diodes uh, can only be checked up to or can only be identified up to 9 volts uh, reverse voltage uh, which is not very great. So let's continue with transistors and we're not using a silicon transistor but let's see again if the tester correctly identifies an old germanium transistor, an AC187K. And yes, we get NPN germanium bipolar junction transistor, also repeated here. Again, nice displayed and usable data, even the leakage current, all data now on one display. So that is really fun to work with but uh, again this should be also this is a standalone device and how often do you have your PC standing at your workbench and want to connect it start the program you the advantage of a standalone device is that you can carry it around make a test and have the data and not fiddling around with a Windows software but anyway if you have your PC available it's much better uh, to use this display instead of the graphical LCD. Now uh, next I just forgot what I put in but the tester will tell us. Oh okay I used in NPN Darlington also here correct symbol and the uh, all the data nicely shown and again are the limitations even even so much that you have to scroll down here or in, uh, enlarge the window. So what we have next is an end channel JFET and also this should be no problem to identify um, repeating again from my uh, final verdict from part three, um, uh, what's really good about the tester is uh, the number of different components that it can identify and uh, no other of the testers could identify that many uh, components like for example let's take a very special one an IGBT insulated gate bipolar transistor an IRG4BC if you want to know which one it is and let's see yeah correct uh, component symbol and all the data again now let's go back to a more traditional 
kind of transistor let's pick a MOSFET a logic level MOSFET in this case an IR LU 024N just takes some time to connect test and correct symbol loads lots of data and even the uh, reverse body diode or reverse protection diode is recognized correctly and what else do we have we have still uh, thyristors or SCRs and triacs let's put one of them that I know of it can identify because the limitation is here you only have a few milliamps of gate current uh, available and not all thyristors or SCRs or triacs um, uh, fire uh, with um, gate currents below 10 milliamps so here is the limitation M22 uh, test current is typically 10 milliamps maximum is 15 milliamps and again oh it, it wasn't an SCR it was a triac uh, let's search for an SCR let's take the tick 106D so that should be a thyristor or SCR silicon controlled rectified and that will be our final specimen again correctly recognized loads of data loads of explanations and well um, the Windows software really is uh, nice it's well written um, it's uh, you don't have to have any experience or knowledge just connect your unknown device press the test button either on the tester itself or here the test bu button in the Windows software and all the rest uh, is displayed in a nice fashion and uh, that will it uh, that will be it for a demonstration of uh, the um, PC program again without the uh, curve tracing function which you can see are here on the uh, on the right well anyway uh, wait for a few weeks until I find the time uh, to do a uh, to test the curve tracing capabilities in comparison to two other curve tracers we have here at the lab and that was it for today thanks for watching bye from Roger bye from Kanaka Labs until next time.